Hello everyone, I'm the Solo Gamer, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Update point seventeen came out, and I'm going to show you all the new features. The first thing I want to show you is actually probably going to be a precursor to what's going to come into the next updates. And uh, if we go into the audio tab, we can see that they've added music and voices as a new option. Which is interesting because there are no voices, and there is no music in the game. So I think they're going to be adding music and voices in maybe the next couple updates. We'll figure that out soon though. Alright, so if we hit start game here, you can tell that we're not in the game yet. And there's a new menu! Look at that! Which is actually really cool, because you can actually control persistent saves right here in the game. This is my world right here. You can actually delete it if you wanted to. Uh, I don't want to delete my own world though, that wouldn't be good. So you can actually start a new world and have both of them in the same- You can have a lot of worlds here, and there's a career option, which we all knew this, but uh, yeah, there is going to be a career in the game, which is not going to be around for a little bit later. But they do have scenarios and training. Training is a tutorial. As you can see, Orbiting 101. And to the moon! We've got Werner von Kerman, who is teaching us how to orbit Kerman. Now, I played a little bit of the tutorial, just to see how it was. It's actually pretty cool. Definitely great for starters. Actually, before we move on, I think you can tell that the artwork and the graphics have greatly improved. The stars look a little different. The sun looks amazing. The atmosphere of Kerbin. It's crazy that they definitely put a lot more work into the graphic system, which is absolutely fantastic. So the scenarios. These are pretty cool. You can do a couple different things. EVA in Kerbin orbit. You got Jebediah here, who is a little bit away from his ship, so you can practice using your EVA pack. Impending impact. Learning how to control the rate of descent on the moon and also moon orbit, which allows you to practice your landings. The only problem with the moon orbit one is that you get a pre-made ship, which is fine, but if you have made your own lander, you can't bring that ship into this scenario, but uh, hey, you can still practice landing, which is definitely something that I need to touch up on. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into my world, and I will show you the new features. Right off the bat, you can see that we've got some gorgeous mountains, the water looks awesome. The only problem is that when you jump into the launch vehicle here, you cannot see this stuff. There is no mountains. I don't know why, but uh, I guess they just wanted to make this little title right here a lot more beautiful. And I like it. I like the gesture. Moving on, the biggest new feature that they've added are definitely planets and moons. So let's jump into the tracking station and check them out. So this is Kerbin. That's the moon. This is Minmus. We know all this. But if we zoom out... We can see a lot more. Let's start off with the first planet to the sun, Moho. This is supposed to imitate Mercury, it's a red, rocky planet. Probably flaming hot if you go there. Yeah, cool. Next planet, Eve, which is very, very pretty. It's purple, with, I think that might be water? It might be water or it might be ice. I'm not sure what it is, but it does look very cool. Now the interesting about EVE is that it actually captured an asteroid in its system, and its name is Gilly. Just a rock floating. I want to land on an asteroid. That would be so cool. So we'll definitely have to do that in the future. Next up, we've got Kerbin. No, no, we already know what that is. We've got uh, Duna, which is larger than Kerbin's orbit. So we're starting to get out into space here, like deep space. Let's go check out Duna. Duna was meant to imitate Mars, as you can tell. It's an orange, dusty planet with polar caps. If you go down to the planet, it actually, the atmosphere looks like Mars, which is actually really cool. I am currently trying to get to Duna, and once I do, I will create a video, maybe a how-to or something like that. I'll give you the ship and everything, and uh, yeah, so that should be cool. We'll do that soon. It actually has a moon, though, called Ike, and uh, it's got some black mineral stuff here, but other than that, it's just like a moon. It's still cool, though. Zooming out farther, we've got Jewel, which is a large green gas giant. And it has several moons and an asteroid. The first one, Laith, is actually an ocean moon. Now, I'm just going to guesstimate the size of this to be around the size of Kerbin. I don't actually know, since there is no comparison or size description here. But I'm going to guess and say it's the size of Kerbin, or close to. Yeah, so it's an ocean moon, which is absolutely crazy. Next up, we have Val, which is an ice moon. Pretty cool. Third, we've got Tylo, which is a white moon. 
just different colors, but still very interesting and definitely desirable to visit. And last but not least, we have Bop, which is another asteroid that found its way into a system. And that's about it for the new celestial bodies. Now, I don't know if they're going to be adding any more planets or moons. I believe this is how many they wanted, but you never know with the internet. It could change very fast. They also changed uh, trees and boulders to actually make them look like trees and boulders instead of paper copies. I can't show you right now because actually I can't find any, to be honest. Okay, let's jump into the VAB and I will show you the new parts. So they've added a new engine called the Atomic Rocket Motor, which is a nuclear thermal rocket. Now the bad thing about this is that it's slow to start and it has a max thrust of 60, but it's not meant to launch a vehicle. It's actually meant for interplanetary travel, which is a big word, yes, but planet to planet, that is what this engine is for. It does not take that much fuel to operate, which is also one of its greatest features. They also updated the description, and I can't show you with the mouse because it'll go away, but it says specific impulse, vacuum 800, and I don't know what vacuum 800 is, but if we look at this one, it has vacuum 2, but it's much, much less. So if you want more vacuum, definitely go with the, the nuclear thermal rocket. <laughs> I have a little test vehicle to show you. Here we are, Tom Bald is looking good. We're gonna be testing out the, uh, the new engine. Yeah, all right. Throttle up, SAS, oh, I forgot a parachute. Oh, well. Yeah, like I said, it's slow to start, as you can tell, but it's not meant for launching on Kerbin. This is not a good example here. I don't know why I showed you this. I actually have one in orbit, and I'm gonna show you this one, because it's a better example. Just ignore all this fancy schmancy stuff on top. Here we go. Take a look at this. Alright, now, as you can tell, the fuel is draining very slowly, and we are moving pretty fast. That's a much better example. I should have showed you that off to begin with. This is actually what I'm working on right now, the Solar One Planetary Explorer. Hopefully, you see this get to Duna, but you'll have to find out in the next episode. Doo -doo -doo. So another part that they've added is the Separatron, and that's actually in propulsion. It's an engine booster type thing, and let me show you what it does. So here it is, very, very tiny, and uh, I have it facing this way, and that one facing this way. And when you separate this part, you can activate these rockets to go along with it, and it'll push the part away from the rocket so that it doesn't come crashing down and hitting your engine or whatnot. So let me demonstrate this for you. So when your external parts actually run out of fuel like this, they basically go off with it like this. And uh, you couldn't really tell, but they were pushed away a little bit. Ah, uh, there they go, blowing up. They were pushed away a little bit. They have a lot of thrust to them. Definitely helpful if you are having a little bit of a problem with separation. So it's a very good new part. Actually, I do have something else to show you. Make sure that your staging is all said and done beforehand. Because this is what happens if you have your staging in the wrong area. We'll do the same thing. You go up. You lose fuel here. You want to separate. Nope! You're just going to spin rapidly out of control. <laughs> it does look beautiful, but it's not going to get you anywhere. Next up, we're going to need the three-man pod, so let's grab this. Now, they have added two new parts for the larger rockets that are definitely needed. First, we go to the second tab here, and as you can see, we've got a large RCS fuel tank, which is perfect. It was actually hard to figure out how to get the small RCS fuel tanks and control a bigger rocket, so that's actually very, very helpful. The next thing is in command and control, and it's an advanced SAS module. And it fits on just like that. These two new parts that they've added are very, very helpful. I'm glad that they've added them. They've also added a lot of pre-built ships, like this Kerbal X, which is loaded up right here. I guess it's supposed to be like SpaceX. What else? They've got the Orbiter 1A. Uh... Huh. I guess you're supposed to build off of this. That would make more sense. Another one is the Pointless and Dangerous, which should be quite fun to... Oh my god. <laughs> Something else I have to demonstrate for you are these new icons down here. The center of lift, center of thrust, and the center of mass. Now if we look right here, the center of mass is in the center of this 
capsule, because that's where the center of mass is. If we add this, well, hang on, let's add uh, this rocket, you can see the center of mass has changed. Add this one, it changes again. But if you add, let's see, one of these solid rocket boosters to the side there, it's going to be a little bit heavy in one direction. So this can help you really decide which way your rocket's going to turn when you launch the thing. So it's very good that that's there. We have the center of thrust. Let's add this engine on here. What do they call this? The main sail? They changed the name. Yeah, so this is the center of thrust. The thrust is going to be pushing the rocket from this center right here up. Now the center of lift actually has to do with space planes. So let's jump into the space plane hangar right here. Throw on a couple of these fuel engines. Let's see, a jet engine at the back. And we'll throw the wings on just like that. Now if you hit the center of lift button you can see where your aircraft is going to lift from and at this point it's in the back which isn't too good so if you had it closer to the middle it would actually be a successful plane. That's actually not close to the middle. Actually you know what if we hit the center of mass if you line these two up just like that this is probably a stable space plane here. We can check this out by uh, testing it. The center of thrust definitely would have helped when I was making that space plane to go to the North Pole, or actually around the world. Uh, yeah, it definitely would have helped me a lot more then. There we go, into the air. Hold up the landing gear. Yeah, this is actually a very, very nice space plane. I can actually control this very smoothly. So, there you go. A nice and easy way to figure out how to stabilize your plane in flight. This is like, I'm gonna call this thing the swooper because that's all it does! No! <laughs> okay, well, it may not be the best plane, but you can see how it can be helpful. So I'm gonna quickly show you something in EVA right here. If we go down here, do 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 And then we run down this ramp here. Oh, get him. Get him. walk along this long, green, marshy field. And here we are. The memorial for the capsule that brave Kerbalnauts first took into the sky. Rest in peace, MK1 pod. There's also a memorial on the moon for Neil Armstrong, who passed away not that long ago, and uh, it's actually in the relative place on the moon to where Tranquility Crater is, where he actually landed on the moon and walked around. I, I thought that was a really nice touch, and I will be dedicating a video to Neil Armstrong, his moon landing and all that in KSP. Yeah, so I really thought that was a great idea. And last but not least, we have the title of the update point 17, or it was before they decided to add planets, IVA. And uh, I will demonstrate this first by lifting off, and then by going over here to an icon that now says IVA. So this is what it looks like when you're taking off. You just get a blue screen. You can actually see the ocean out there. Now if you double click on a window, you can squeeze your face up to it and look around, which is cool. You can throttle up and down, it actually works. Switch from surface mode to orbital, oh, there we go, I just had to drop the, uh, the solid rocket boosters off. Yeah, you get your little nav ball, you got your co-pilot over there, actually let's jump to Hudney who has a different view because he's the main pilot. Most knobs and buttons don't do much yet. They definitely want you to be able to push a button and have something work. So all these buttons will work eventually in time. Now you don't get much of a view as the pilot. I guess you don't need to see where you're going. That's fine. Yep, now we got the atmosphere over here. Very, very cool. Nice touch. Now I'm actually going to jump into a space plane and show you what that looks like. Because it actually makes sense to be an IVA while you're piloting something. Just because it makes you feel like you're in a jet. Yeah, rocket power VTOL. There we go. No, oh my god! <laughs> that is awesome! 
Oh my god, I've got to try this out. So they have pre-built rockets as well as pre-built space planes, which is just fantastic. Alright, ready? Let's go. <laughs> Oh my god. No. Oh god. I think even on Beatles there are... Oh, no, 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 no. Yep, I'm gonna lose it. Son of a bitch, no! I think there's there's wings on Beatles, so that, that doesn't seem right to me. But uh, we'll quickly jump into one of their other space plane things, just so we can check out the IVA that way. The Albatross 3, huh? Good god, that sounds awesome. Let's do this one. So if you press B, obviously you break, but if you're in a parked position and you double tap B, you can actually hit the parking brakes and you won't move. Look how nice that is. Alright, so let's jump into IVA mode, and uh, I can't see anything! This is not how you're supposed to pilot a plane. Okay, last but not least, the Raven Spear MK3. Yeah, we'll use this and hopefully we'll be able to see out of this cockpit. I know there's one that you could see out of. Alright, let's jump into IVA. Yeah, there we go. This is the jet one. Alright, let's throttle up. Come on. Yeah. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up! There we go. This is the life. Oh yeah. An actual pilot in a space plane. Well, you can actually use this as a plane simulator. Which is just fantastic. Alright, let's see if we can land here. Ah, oh, look at that when you slam your face up against the glass, you can see a little bit below you, too. Alright, let's see if we can land on the runway. It's stable, but it does wobble around. Oh, what just happened? <laughs> oh, God. I hear ex- Oh, I see explosions. Well, I landed. Oh. Uh. Right. <laughs> there we go. Oh, you look dead, buddy. Get up. Come on. Get up. Oh. Here we go. Beautiful. I think we did it. So that was all the new features and stuff that they've added in point 17. When I have news on what they're planning on the next one, I will tell you. If you haven't yet bought the game, I recommend you do so. I will have a link in the description, as always. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more. Alright, I got this. This is like Legos. We can put this back together. Yes, I have plans. <laughs>